you start talking. Okay, last session. Um, the adventuring company was conscripted by the knight Seth Highland and taken from the jails underneath Castle Stormloft to a place in the barrier piece called the Misty Path. They entered into the path, found a mist uh, dragon, um, which they defeated. It called itself Kaliga as it warned them to flee. When they defeated it, it screamed out with a death scream that sounded like a old woman or a woman. After defeating it, they min, uh, made their way into the Valley of Fog, headed through a forest path, up the mountain path, to the Tower of Fog. And when they arrived there, Seth pulled a package out of his backpack, and it exploded. Okay. In those moments, um, Hadrian was struck by a piece of debris and knocked to the ground. Um, you aren't unconscious. You are just a bit dazed um you're not able to see much of the uh, the the field around you as to what's happening but you do know that the stone walls of the place have kind of fallen in um and fire has basically ignited the thatch and wood portions of the roof and interior of these buildings um Gimmitz made the wise choice of moving back to the gate of the um this uh, open space and bailey um, of the uh, the tower keep um, and upon getting to that position you're not really able to look back into the place um, other than to see your two friends um, you also notice that there is um, you know a lot of fire kind of emanating from the the tower portion um, which is still standing and has not kind of broken away but being a stone wise individual you notice that the um the stone of where the the, the detonation hit um is very weak it doesn't look like the tower will last very long so staying here because of the way it's kind of positioned might be a bad idea um and then bellerin made his way to a cart um, and kind of got tucked to it to try and kind of cover himself from the explosion as well. The cart is smashed by rubble and it kind of dashes you back a little bit, not harmfully, just, you know, you gracefully kind of get away from it. Um, and as the fire, um, you know, and chaos kind of is, is a, a slowing and abetting, um, you notice that the two mages that were kind of walking out to you to greet you before the explosion happened, have been smashed by rocks as well. Um, there's no sign or sight of Seth. You saw him kind of running towards a building, and that building's wall and door, main entrance door have fallen in towards the uh, the courtyard. All right. Um, last piece of information. Um, there's one smaller kind of building out in front of the tower space. And um, even amidst the roar of flames and the chaos of the stones falling, you can hear what sounds like a young girl crying. All right, I leave it to you, um, uh, Hadrian. Um, dazed um, and confused, everything kind of has a, a ring to it um, from the shock of it. What would you like to do? Can I hear the girl crying? Yeah, again, a bit hazy for you, but um, yes, to be certain you can. I'd like to slowly try and make my way towards it and try and somehow get inside to rescue the young one. Okay. Um, Bellerin, you can see that uh, Hadrian's kind of making his way towards a, a strange building. Um, as you're kind of watching him do that, um, you're kind of looking for signs of Gimmitz and Seth, who kind of disappeared from sight for you, um, or any other um, just a living people, and there doesn't appear to be any sign other than Hadrian and the crying. All right. Um, if I see Hadrian and the crying... As you said, I'm looking around trying to find where Seth and Gibbets went. Or Gibbets. Why did I call him Gibbets? I feel like an <laughs> asshole for that. Um, anyway, <laughs> between trying to check for Gibbets and uh, Seth, I'll make my way over to Hadrian. Partially okay. because you said that he's dazed, so does he look like he's staggering? Oh, he's, he's definitely staggering, for sure. All right. I'll effectively put an, or a shoulder under his arm. 
because last thing we need is our uh, arcanist to, you know, manage to brain himself. All right. Um, you would also notice on your way over there, the you're kind of passing by the building that Seth ran into that you last saw him dart towards. And you can see that there are large tatters of his cloak underneath pieces of rubble. But uh, based on what you're seeing here, it doesn't look like he is recoverable um, if he is underneath those stones. All right, I'll make a note of it, because if we get a chance, or once I've checked the guy who is up and going, we can try to dig him out. Okay. You two start heading that way. Gimmits, you kind of look over the courtyard, and you can see your friends leaving that way. And just as kind of an aside, you're kind of you know, trying to maintain perception, and you look back to the way you came. Um, and if you recall, the uh, forest path... Um, was, is in between is set in the valley between the uh, the large towering mountain in the middle and the balcony that you kind of exited out of the misty path. Um, it's about an hour and a half, two hours walk um, to that point, but you can see that even from that distance, you know, because of it's not a long distance; it's just a hard distance because you're going down and then up. Um, but on that balcony, you can see what looks like six figures. Um, and from what you can tell, the colors that they are um, uh, adorned with are purple and gold, which are the colors of the um, Stormloft regulars or the um, mil military of the city. Uh, do I see what happened to Seth? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you definitely saw rocks fall on um, that Basically, he ran into a building, and then the front wall kind of descended down, causing the roof to kind of cave in. Um, and if you kind of look over in that direction and get closer that way, you'll see that there are tattered pieces of cloak kind of hanging out of a bunch of rocks. Um, I'm going to say that Gimmits moves over there to try to investigate or see if he's still alive or sure. savable. Go ahead and make a perception check, um, and I'll say um, you'll have a plus two bonus. Your proficiency is effectively being added double because we're talking about stone. All right. So, uh, looking at it, uh, also, yeah, looking at it, you you are pretty certain that um, he is not under these rocks, and if he is, he's not recoverable. Um, if he's under these rocks, he is flatter than a pancake. Okay, so I assume that he's either dead or he's made it out at this point because he's probably he's, just as close. Yeah, he's either dead or um, I mean, you're pretty sure he's dead. If he's under there, he's dead. Magic had to have there had to have been some form of magic or absolutely insane luck if he was to get out of that. Okay, so at that point, I think I would move on and go over to Hadrian and Bellard to see how the okay. they're doing to regroup. Okay, they'd be entering into the building um, that they're hearing the sound coming from uh, before you um, before you get there. As you approach, um, you kind of look into it and you see a young girl um, cradling uh, an older woman. Um, the older woman doesn't look like she's had any kind of grievous trauma to her, but you can tell um, Bellerin and also Hadrian uh, just by the, the the color of her skin, the pallor of her skin, um, and just the nature of this. Um, she's the old woman's dead. I would like to just walk over to the girl. Okay, and, and just um, say, I'm sorry, but you need to leave. She looks up at you and she says, um, with you know tears kind of streaking down her eyes. You can see that she's wearing some sort of um, you know acolyte's robes um, or getup, and she's looking up at you with her you know icy blue eyes, and she says, "She's dead." <laughs> She died before this destruction. Did you bring this upon us? Did you bring this upon us? Did you kill her? Who Not are knowingly. you? We need to leave. Questions for, are for later. For now, we need to run. The only way that we can die is if you kill our familiars. Hers was guarding the path. How did you even get here? 
a familiar wouldn't be a dragon now, would it? Uh, make an arcana check. So you would know that familiars in current ages are not as important as familiars of old and magic. Um, currently, familiars are basically just um, uh, effectively like just summon creatures um, that are not as important as they once were. In olden times, familiars were bound to their casters, bound to the people that they would. Um, they, they acted as kind of a conduit to prime sources of magic, um, and. Uh, in older times, they could have been like much greater creatures than those that are summoned forth in current age. You've never heard of someone having like a true dragon or even a weird misty dragon, um, but like pseudo dragons to be sure. Um, yeah, um, that definitely could have been familiars. But what sh what you're assuming in your head <laughs> is probably not. I'm assuming. Yeah. Let's go. Come on. We need to leave. I know that you might be safe because you're, of your familiar, you say. But we still need to leave. I'm not leaving with you. Who are you? I'll apologize for this later. And I'd like to try and knock him out. Okay. Um, Bellerin, um, you kind of see Hadrian talking to her. Do you want to interject anything with uh, this conversation before he walks over and tries to knock her out? Uh, yes, actually. He said that, or as she had said, she was, or only with the death of their familiars can they die. Mm -hmm. um, if I do see him raise his weapon, I will try to interpose the shield. Like, Miss. Oh, uh, so that he can't hit her? Got it. Miss, if, or with the destruction raining down, what would be worse? Staying here and risking everything or getting out? If she was your teacher, then don't you isn't your duty to keep those lessons alive? She kind of like wipes her eyes and looks up at you. But what if you killed her? What if it was you who did it? I don't know who you are. Stay away. Would I know about Seth's cloak or would I have not seen that? You're dazed, yeah. Have um, I come in yet? You would be walking in right about now. Uh, I, I would like Gimmits to speak. Have I overheard any of this? Yeah, a bit of it. Um, I would like to answer with, we came here not of our own volition, and the person who brought us here is now dead, from my understanding. She uh, looks back to the half-elf, um, kind of looking like she's trying to gauge how he responds to the dwarf's words. Um, you did a pretty great job in what you had said. Uh, this is just an out of character, er, character mention, uh, but do me a favor and make a persuasion check for me, uh, Bellerin. All right, one moment. Ouch. Eh, not too bad. You had advantage for it because of what you had said before. She looks to you and she says, I will not go with you, but I will escape this place with you. And she kind of stands up and she looks down at her, um, this person who's important to her. As she's kind of setting her aside, her head kind of turns, um, and her eyes kind of, her eyelids kind of fall open. And, uh, Bellerin, you notice that her eyes, um, you know, even though the, she obviously shows the, the signs of a dead person, but her eyes appear to be ruby red, um, like those of the old Aladrin. Um, she appears to have bright red ruby eyes. When the uh, girl, you said the girl set her aside, and that was when the eyes kind of fell open. open. Yeah, her head kind of lulled to the side and her eyes opened. Uh, with an urgent reverence, for lack of a better term, because let's face it, there is shit going down. Uh, he'll actually kneel and turn the head so that it's actually facing upward again, if the body's laying on its back, mm -hmm. and very gently close both of the eyes okay. with a whispered prayer. Okay. And I, I, 
I, I think the um, I think you get it, but just to hammer the point home, the eyes are very familiar to you. The eyes are very familiar to anybody who fought the creature Kaliga in the path. Um, when you shut those eyes and start saying your prayers, you, you kind of have an an idea of what might have happened, what it might have transpired here. I yeah, think I'm fairly certain, but as you said, things are still happening. It's Correct. Them all over later. Correct. Did the um, body look heavy? No, not really. I'd like to pick it up and carry it so we can bury it later. She uh, starts crying more. She says, stop it! Stop touching her! And she runs over and she just, like, swats at you. Would you not wish to bury her? It's not how we do it. No, and she Fine. starts running. She starts running out of the building. I, I put the body back down quite naturally. And it was good. Is is she out of earshot now? Yeah. Um, I'd like to relay to Hadrian and Bellerin and let them know that I believe we have company incoming. Uh, they're the Stormloft regulars, I believe, are on their way, and we're in a precarious situation. Especially if we're all criminals now. Well, I don't think that... Well, I think that depends on how we play this here. Oh. I might want to stay hidden then. So yeah, a Stormloft regular is basically a lightly armored um, kind of knight. Um, they are typically only seen with like two real metal... Um, the bracers and the helmet, uh, which are typically forged of uh, brass or bronze. Um, they fight with mace and dagger. Um, they wear the uh, tabard of the king, um, and uh, they do whatever he asks. So, why they are here, you cannot be certain. Well, we know that Seth Highwin was on a mission from the king of Stormloft, right? Correct. He said he was. He said he was. Well, yes, and he walked into the dungeon and got the king's official to release us from the jail. So, I mean... Uh, at least Gimmitz is certain that he was true with, he said he was on a mission for the king. That's a good point. So, now here we are, and as far as I'm concerned, what just happened here is an act of war, if there ever was one. So, how do we proceed from this? It's a good question, too. The go. The uh, girl appears, if you guys are heading back out and following her, she's in the courtyard, and she's making her way towards the gate. Uh, it looks like she's going to take the normal mountain path down. I'd like to run after her, because if this was a declaration of war, she's in a whole lot of trouble, because she's quite clearly an acolyte. Sure. Agreed. So nobody okay. here really has history trained. <laughs> but I'll let everybody make an intelligence check real quick to th so you can think about um, what's basically transpired and how that kind of relates politically. Because you guys are making some sound points, but I think one point is not falling hard enough. Okay. Um, Bellerin and Gimmitz, you guys are pretty well familiar with the environs. Um, this group um, here, if it's anything, um, is not affiliated with any kind of um, uh, like kingdom or other kind of society. It's its own entity. And uh, Gimmitz, a bit smarter, uh, you would know too that if there is such a, if this group of mages was hiding away in the mountains, then they were probably hiding away from either the king's rules and laws and were doing so illegally, or there's a faction known as the conglomerate, uh, which you're not terribly familiar with, but you know that their uh, magical magistrates, the mage ear, um, try to regulate magic in the world. And if they were hiding away up in the mountains, then they were probably hiding away from them as well. We were here to do a job, and I say that we stay here and complete it. Okay. I believe we already have completed it. Deliver the package. We did deliver the package, but to what end was that package brought here but to bring down these walls? The walls are down, but that tower still stands. Oh, it's coming. You can see that it's coming down. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's literally maybe five or ten minutes from now it'll come down on itself. 
I'd quite like not to oh, be okay, okay. more box. So at the very least, I wish to run away. And if I can save that girl, then I wish to. Well, it might be better if we bring her back in our custody to these Stormloft guards than for them to find her alone and running from this tower. Yes. Uh, Hadrian, um, you're pretty familiar with the Stormloft regulars from your past. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know that the Stormloft regulars were an honorable lot beforehand. Some of the guards that you would actually have talked to on your way back in. But right now, you're not 100% certain if they're uh, an honorable lot or corrupted. Yeah, which is kind of my thing is, I know this girl is likely in danger. I'm not sure if I could trust the regulars anymore. And I know I've got this guy's self with which to make yeah. her clothes not so clearly acolyte Right. Um, she's starting to head down the mountain path, and I'm assuming you guys are doing likewise. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm running. Okay. Trying to catch up. Also running because, let's face it, if they attack her, well, I've already tried to stop one attack on her. Right. Is this power clearly done? Like, there's. So. A cinematic point. You guys are making your way down the mountain path, and as you're doing so, rubble and fire starts to splay out off of the uh, the cliff face, or off of the cliff uh, top from above you, and kind of rain down. Not in a fashion that's like catastrophic, just kind of like cinders and small bits of rubble passing down. Um, you hear a loud crash, and you can see that um, not down the path that you're going down, but a ways from you, you can actually see the head of the tower fly off of the clifftop and descend down into the forest. Um, you also would note too, um, Gimmits, that the Stormloft regulars, the group that was coming, they're not visible, so they must have made their way into the forest path. Um, if you're going to try and intercept them and go and communicate with them, um, that would be the direction that you'd go, head up the forest path. If your intent is to not be seen by them, you would want to head into the forest itself, um, north and away from them, into the valley itself. Um there were tattered bits of Seth Tywin's clothing in that destroyed entryway. Can I go retrieve a bit of his cloak or some other piece of discernible information that I could find from him or discernible clothing? The cloak that he wore was just kind of a grayish cloak. You can definitely grab a piece of it, no problem. Uh, but it definitely did not signify that this is his cloak. Like, it wasn't... You know that the, um, the knights, especially the ones that wore the type of armor that he wore, typically wore golden cloaks the golden wings wore golden cloaks his cloak was dark gray um not something you would regularly see on a night of his order okay so if i had a piece of that would i be able to say or convince someone discernibly that this was his you could try but it's not it's not going to pop as absolutely his if you get my meaning could i search to see if i could find anything else more uh discernible as I had mentioned with, uh, and Gimmits is probably pulling you away as you're trying to, as I had mentioned with Gimmits, the amount of rock that seems to be on top of him, it's not something that you can clear very easily. Um, if he is under those rocks, um, he is not recoverable, is the lightest way of putting it. And the most metal way I can put it is um, he's ripped asunder, and um, there's pieces of him all scattered in the stone, beneath the stone. Okay, I'll just take the piece of cloak then, and I will okay. follow Hadrian and Bellerin. And I would like to refer to them that I'd like to journey towards where the Stormloft Knights were. Okay. I don't think the Stormloft regulars are to be trusted. I'm inclined to agree. If a knight of Stormloft was to act with so little honor and to allow such an attack... Yes, but we agreed to do this mission, and I believe to do to completion, we at least need to try to contact someone in Stormloft. If not these regulars, then maybe back at the city itself. The uh, girl kind of makes it um, to a point where she gets a bit tired. She takes a stop on the rocks. Um, she still has the redness of crying on her eyes um, and just pure sadness on her face. Um, but she you know, crosses her arms and she looks like she's traveling a bit. She looks to you all and says, um, what's that about Stormloft? 
The Stormwolf regulars are here. We were under conscription by them. Are you with them? We were conscripted against our better judgment to them. Are you meaning to turn me over to them? She says as her eyes start to kind of like narrow. No. Would we have a reason to? I'd like to say no. And what did what did you say? So <laughs> I said do would we have reason to? She looks at you and she says The king has been out for our artifacts for some time. And no doubt that's why you were sent here against your will. I still don't know if I can trust you. Regardless, when we get down to the bottom of the mountain path, I'm heading away from you. I'm not going with you. Unless you mean to take me by force. And when she says that, she kind of stands up with her arms still crossing her chest and her face just looking just mad as hell. Miss, if we intended to take you by force, I would have allowed my friend to knock you unconscious. Instead, our more pressing matter is to protect you. You're the first survivor that we have found, and right now, I would rather not see a culture wiped from the face of the point of the world. Then we're not going to. We're not. Whatever you were saying about the Stormloft regulars, we're not dealing with them. I'm not going to deal with murderers. No, but here's a sign of trust in us at least, and I'd like to cast a sky self on her. She, as you're starting to cast the spell, um, you see this very strange form start to shimmer around her, and uh, you actually see what looks like a serpent or a dragon kind of appear around her, bright red, and it seems to kind of stop the spell, like resists the magic, and then it fades back into just not present. And she says, I understand what you're trying to do, and it looks like she, she kind of, you know, read the magic as you were casting it but I don't need your assistance in that regard I don't hide from anyone well I have a question then if you're not willing to let us help you could you help us what do you mean well at this point with such a dishonorable act committed by what seems to be Stormloft and its government i don't believe that we are in its good graces nor do we want to be with such a dishonorable organization and so i believe that we're on the run now well welcome to my life i'm going to the town of fog if you wish to follow me there then you can is it safe from the king's machinations there she looks up at the uh the cliff and then she looks back to you. If he has that within his power, I don't think anywhere we can go is safe from his machinations and power. If he no. has that within his power. Now, you said he was after your artifacts. What artifacts was he after to destroy an entire castle? She looks at you, and then she kind of looks away. Is it still safe, or is it liable to fall into their hands? Well, I'm, hoping, like this. I'm, well, I'm hoping like to find it. out, and we'll see if it's survived. And she kind of looks down at the uh, the broken head of the tower uh, from your position on the mountain path. But I doubt it survived. And yeah, I'd just like to say, is it anything like this and reveal the statue? She kind of shakes her head. No, um, nothing like that at all. Um, question. From the route that the Stormclaw regulars were proceeding, would it look like they were going to be where the tower is? They were basically following the same path that you took. So they would arrive at, because the balcony, like the, the exit for the Misty Path is an hour and a half, two hours away on foot, because you have to descend down the face of the, the mountain that you exit out of, walk through the forest, then up the mountain path up to the Tower of Fog. Um, they may be able to intercept you in 45 minutes from that start point. So they're probably not right upon you. If they're going in the same direction that you did enter in on and are heading up to the, the wreckage, then, um, I mean, they'll be there in a, 
hour or so. It's it's a bit of a walk. It's very unlikely that you run a f run into them um, if you don't walk up the forest path. Perhaps we should go to the uh, head of the tower first to ensure that he doesn't get this artifact if it's so important. Agreed. Before we intercept them in the forest, we can lay a trap. Be safer and not fighting in open ground. How close is the tower? The tower head is it's basically down at the base of the mountain. Um, you'll get there in a couple of minutes if you want to head for it. Is that the direction? So probably wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't take too much time for us to investigate that, would it? Compared to oh, no, timing not. coming with them to get to us? Yeah, it, not at all. It wouldn't take that long at all. Then I say let's head to the uh, tower and, and see if we can get that artifact. What about you, little one? Will you come with us, or do you wish to head to this town of Fog? I'm heading to the tower head first, and then to the town of Fog. Fine. Let's be on our way. All I ask, little one, is if they are indeed after your order, you have to disguise yourself somehow. You are quite clearly an acolyte of some kind. I'll buy clothes in the town. Let's go. But well, wear this for now, and I take off the cloak, and because I, I'm a, I assume I'm taller than her, so yeah. whereas it's just like a cloak for me, it could be wrapped around her. Yeah. To hide the hide. She'll, she'll wear the cloak. Uh, she pulls out a dagger and cuts the bottom hem of it so that it's short, um, so it doesn't descend past her, you know, like uh, calves. And she basically takes the rest of the fabric and hands it back to you, and she pulls in the cloak tight around herself. I like that cloak. And now it's a hat just, cloak. Just, and I look at the strip of fabric in my hand and just go, I like that cloak. And she then I want to proceed to wrap that around. Oh no, I'm not going to do that. Not while she's nearby. Never mind. <laughs> Fair enough. You guys make it to the head of the tower. Broken, um, still kind of uh, simmering with um, uh, flames. It looks like the roof was thatched and uh, pitched. And it is completely burnt out, like the um, the tiles. Um, so it's thatched underneath, and then pitched above that, and then tiled above that, in kind of a conical shape. But that's pretty much been burned and broken apart. So you can enter into this room of the tower, which is like the top of the tower, um, from either the staircase or the ceiling. Either way, you're looking at it. Um, it's not. It didn't land perfectly. It's on its side. So the room is basically, if you're entering from the ceiling or from the stairs below, you're doing so on ground level, and uh, everything else is kind of just put into the what against the one wall of the uh, the building. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. okay. It's been tilted on its side, basically. Yeah, it's it's, it's sideways. And when you kind of go in, you can see that the room's pretty much like you know ravaged there's things that have burned and things that haven't but the main thing that you notice is that there's a um, broken series of sheets of glass um, and what looks like kind of a um, a frame for like a glass box uh, that's been broken apart um, and sitting there um, in that is a book um, she runs straight for the book there do appear to be other things in the room but she goes straight for the book and snatches it up um, I'll start with uh, Hadrian because um, he's the quickest and probably the most keen for this kind of thing um, do you want to look around the room go and speak with her um, anything you want to do in particular um, what question first was the spell stop slot still used for the attempted disguise set yes Okay, I'm out of second level spells. Damn. Um, well, first level spells. Um, yeah, I'd like a quick glance around the room, see if there's anything of value. Okay. You start gandering around and searching. That's fine. Um, Bellerin, um, when she goes into the room and such, uh, you can see that Hadrian's kind of you know perusing. Is there anything that you want to do? I'm actually going to keep an eye if any of the... Uh... Stormcloak regulars were making better time than we estimated, so I'm going to stay near where I can watch the path um, and call back to them. Grab some pieces from the framework, at least that way if they try to put together whatever was inside, we can delay it longer. Okay. 
So remaining vigilant and on watch. And Gimmits? Um, I would like to go over to the girl. Okay. And clearly she's snatched up the book, right? Yes. Um, I would I would like to speak to her and relay, you know, if this is your artifact, then this is your charge now, not ours. And we make no means to take this from you. She nods her head and she says, I can trust the word of a dwarf to spite your natural greediness. And she starts to kind of like, you know, make sure the pages of the book are uh, intact. And then she kind of nods her head to you and says, thank you. And uh, she tucks the book away into um, uh, like a side pouch. And you can see that she has another book in there already. Um, you're not terribly familiar with spellcasters because they're not terribly common in the Dwarven culture. Um, but you're pretty certain that she is some sort of spellcaster based on um, her and Hadrian's uh, last um, you know, interaction and the book that she has inside of her, her, her bag. Um. To ask her, like, is this the one artifact? Because I know you said artifacts. Is this what you we came here to find? I, I can't tell you more about it. I'm sorry, but yes, this is what I, I sought. Um, and she nods her head. Uh, Hadrian, as you're kind of you know checking things out, um, you notice that there are a couple of broken cases that look like they had things that were you know contained within, uh, you find um, three things that seem to have held up um, from the, uh, the, the event. Um, one appears to be a uh, glass dagger um, that uh, doesn't look like it was shattered or broken. The glass of it is kind of similar to like a, like a pink quartz, uh, the blade, um, and it looks like it's kind of just hammered like uh, obsidian um, to form its blade. The handle is kind of bejeweled. Looks pretty nice. Um, there's a shield. Um, not a large shield, um, but it appears that the shield um, is made out of a dark colored wood and set inside of a bluish iron frame. Um, and uh, the, the last item that seems to have survived um, is an axe. Uh, just... A battle axe uh, that looks like it's made of dwarf, like dwarvish metals. Um, it looks like it was crafted by a dwarf. It has a symbol on its head, its axe head, that is a cross, a pair of crossed axes. Do I see this? Uh, no, Hadrian sees those things. If he's going to steal them, he's going to steal them. I'd like to grab all three. Okay. You have a jeweled dagger, a um, uh, Dwarvish axe and a uh, strange shield. Um, when you pick up the shield, um, you're almost kind of set aback for a second, though, um, because the face of the shield looks like it has kind of a strange, like patterning of a, a closed eye. Um, and as you're kind of like, you know, putting it away or stowing it or whatever, you're almost certain you saw the eye open and look at you, but you're not 100% sure. You, 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 you doubt yourself for a second. You think about it and you look at it and you watch it and it doesn't seem to move. Okie dokie. Um, yeah, and then I turn to the girl and go, well, when we get moving, I have some questions to ask you. Sure, sure. Let's go. And she's, yep. she's got the book stowed, and she's got the dwarf in tow, and they start heading out. Uh, as you're watching, Bellerin, and they're getting ready to kind of get out and head on their way, um, you don't see anything. Um, nobody following or coming to you. Um, but you do see that uh, the tower, um, it has... Uh, you know, smoke kind of still billowing out from it. Um, there appears to be a single form that kind of rises up from the forest to the tower. And that form is that of like a hawk or a falcon. Um, and it starts to kind of circle the tower. Um, I will call first the girl's attention as well as the others and point it out to them asking, or specifically asking her, is that normal? And then to the other two, or is that something from the Stormloft? So she says, I, I don't know of many birds of prey that enter into this, this valley. Um, no, I've never seen too many birds like that. I say we hasten our departure then. Okay. Agreed. I'll launch one of my two daggers at it 
on the oh, oh, no, no, no. or is uh, it moving it, much too fast? Hundreds of feet away. Oh, I don't mind then. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was like right above us and I was just going to go, nope. He's... <laughs> hundreds of feet away, away and we see it circling the tower. So, yeah. to me, if it's that far away and I can see it clearly, I'm thinking it's a very big bird. <laughs> Oh yeah, decent sized. Yep. Um, it's run. <laughs> definitely a large eagle. I see we move away stealthily. Would I know if the storm off regulars would use birds of prey too with my run-ins with them? So uh, you haven't dealt with many outside of the city, so no. But you do know that the um, house Eversol, the kingdom, is very eagle centric. Um, their uh, paladins and knights that do quest out into the wild ride giant eagles. This one doesn't appear to have anything upon it that's riding it, nor does it look like it's large enough to do that. It's a big enough bird, but it's not like you know horse size. It's more like uh, you know size of a decent sized dog. Um, you're not you're not certain. Okay. Yeah, and then I f- agree with I think it was Gimmits that spoke. Mm-hmm. Let's move a bit stealthily through the forest towards and let the girl lead. I look at it when he says stealthily and jiggle the art or the chain mail that I've got. Yes, stealth. I've heard of that one time. All right. Um, you guys travel for some time, hours, um, it feels like. Um, and she seems to be leading you on this path that kind of is a winding path. Um, she's very quiet. Um, but of course, if you have any questions for her uh, in particular, let's go ahead and cover that. I'd like to ask her, I uh, say, you seem like a more competent magic user than myself. Do you have any ideas what this is? Um, certainly not. Um, we just have certain rites that have been performed upon us to give us certain abilities. You... Saw my familiar, I, I take it? Yes. Yes. Um, I am but an acolyte in the ways of magic. I don't know if I'm much better than you, um, but I can take a look at it if you wish. What is it? It is a statue of or a calcum. I've never heard of that. Or a calcum? She kind of looks at you confused. I, I apologize. I... I don't think I'd be much help. The statue appears to be um, perhaps some sort of religious figure. Maybe it is the goddess of the seasons. She kind of looks at you confused. Bellowin? That was your name, yes? (laughs) I shout back. I'm sorry, my computer kind of glitched for a second, so I missed part of what was said. It got robotic. He showed her the statue that he had, which you've seen before, um, just offhandedly, but haven't had much time to talk about it. Um, it looks like it's made out of jade, but the metal that it's actually made out of is aurichalcum. And um, he was asking her if she knew anything about it, and she said, it looks like it's a religious figure, maybe the goddess of the seasons. So when he called my name, was it t- asking me to take a look at it then? Yeah. Yes. Want me to make a knowledge religion roll on it then? Yeah, yes, yes, please. Yes, please. Sorry. All right. Um. Yeah. It, it's very clearly this. You know the the. Um, figure of Bicavaria, the goddess of the seasons, the mother of the Witwaven. Um, but it doesn't appear to have any markings or indications that um, you know denote its importance or a maker's mark or anything to that effect. It's just a statue of the goddess of the seasons, the, the, the maiden goddess. Um, and uh, she seems to be kind of praying. If you... I'm sorry, let me go ahead and do one of these bad boys. That's what it looks like. I look over at him. Well, considering it is uh, going by the lore and everything, the mother of, well, my own orders, goddesses, I would assume it's part of something much larger. Most likely, seeing as it got me into a spot of bother when I took it. 
and then I just put it back in my bag. After having walked for a long while, you folks kind of stop and take a sh- uh, short rest. Um, she kind of sits and uh, away from you guys on a stone um, alongside the path, pulls out the book that she had and um, starts trying to open it. Um, as you can see now and may have saw before, it has a lock um, mechanism on the side. And um, she kind of very quickly um, puts the book back into her bag with a a disappointed look on her face. I can try and unlock that if you wish. I'm oh, quite good with locks. Um, I no, it's okay. She says she kind of pats the uh, the bag. It's fine. If you're sure. She nods her head, and you can tell you've been <laughs> you've you've tried to be helpful with your arts to people you are terribly keen with um, in the past, and you're pretty sure that she doesn't trust you yet. <laughs> Miss, if we're going to be traveling together, even if it's for a short time, can we at least get something to call you by other than Miss? It seems terribly informal and rude. My name is Rodin. I'm Bellaran. Nice to meet you. Well, though I would prefer it was under better circumstances. Of course, that's what I... She, um... You know, you're, you're taking your look of her, um, you know, kind of gauging her. She's probably somewhere in her early, maybe mid-teens um, for a human girl. Her hair is very unnaturally colored. It doesn't look like it's like a, you know, uh, uh, aesthetic thing either. It doesn't look like she dyed it. It looks like her hair is naturally that color. Um, her eyes are icy blue, um, and her robes, um, they're red, uh, with gold trim. And she has two, she has a, a pair of pauldrons with green gemstones set in them. Um, her, uh, yeah, she just, she, she, she has a very kind of, uh, timid stance as you've seen her so far, a more, probably more to do with the, the events of the day than anything else. And, uh, while we're at it, I'm actually going to do that pulse that is divine sense. Yep. Because with my actual oath, I can sense things other than evil outsiders. Right. Um, you can detect Fay, correct? Correct. Okay. So you detect upon her, she doesn't appear to be manifesting any kind of strange eeriness, but there's this gold serpent that seems to be kind of about her um, on closer inspection as the aura kind of manifests to you. This golden serpent has the legs of a dragon. Um, try and think more like um, Japanese or Chinese style dragons, like the Shenlong kind of serpenty kind of dragon uh, that seems to be writhing about her and kind of held to her. And it has an eminence that's kind of fey in nature. I'll not ask your friend's name. Such would be rude. She kind of gives you like a look and then kind of looks down at the ground. Um, not sure how to take it. Um, and uh, yeah, what are, what is Gimmits doing to during uh, what is Gimmits doing during the short rest? That was hard. Um, he's probably mostly surveying the land about which we're going kind of directional wise does he have any kind of idea where we are uh, positionally from Stormloft? so the um let me go ahead and pull you to a uh, map okay um why is that not changing there it goes okay so as you can see, there's a red path that kind of snakes up to the uh, the mountains there, right? Yes. Okay. That end of that uh, path is the uh, Misty Path. The Misty Path goes into the Barrier Peaks, and your presumption is that you're somewhere in like the the mountains here, um, in a valley set between uh, several of the mountains um, that has a forest patch to the it. The Barrier Peaks, right? Correct. The Barrier Peaks. Okay, uh, historical dwarven settlements or villages that are in these mountains? None. The uh, barrier peaks are actually regarded as kind of a dead zone um, for most civilizations and cultures. The reason why that is, is the barrier peaks are mountains that are kind of held against the um, the 
province of Vitalis, and that's a demonic hellscape, a horrible place, says most people, um, where the creatures and denizens therein are always trying to come out and destroy um, everything else. They're bad folks. The barrier peaks are kind of like warded um, by older magics um, and don't really allow much in the way of transgressions through them. Uh, Goliaths, though, um, which are technically cousins of the dwarves, do have some tribes that exist here in the barrier peaks. Okay. Uh, besides that, um, I'm just assuming the Gimmits is taking out his book at this point and is just jotting down a, like his journal, just a summation of the events that have occurred so far. Doodling like an explosion. Uh, <laughs> Basically, because he's not much of a writer, so it probably looks like a small child drawing something. Like, hey, look, there's a tower and then there's fire. Picture books are awesome. As you guys are kind of, you know, getting ready to pack yourselves back up and get on to the move, um, it seems like you, uh, um, <laughs> it's a bit of a cliche, and I've already done it once in this uh, session, but I'm doing it again anyways. You hear what sounds like the scream of a girl um, just down the path. Wonderful. More children. Um, I would say this is more of a woman, though. I meant... Girl as in the female gender. Oh, okay, okay. Still, Gimmit right. says, says that out loud. Wonderful, more children. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to... Um, yeah, well, you're a dwarf. You're probably older than her anyway, so she might be a child in comparison to you. I'd just like to pull out my short sword in one hand, a dagger in the other, and just stay... Even though I know she can probably protect herself, near the girl, just in case they're not friendly. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pull you to a battle map, and hopefully this works perfectly. Um, but knowing my luck, it won't, so we'll see how it goes. Ah. I, I would like to move the kind of point, so whatever would put me between these where I would like to be. Sure. You see yourself where you're at? One second, it's loading in for me. I found where I'm at. Okay. I found where I'm at. Yep, I see me. All right. So just around the bend is where you hear the sound come from. Um, if you guys are starting to head in that direction, great. What you'll see is a girl kind of crawling from underneath a log um, or a fallen tree, rather, um, and kind of like now laying up on the road. Um, go ahead and move yourself as you assume you would, kind of getting closer to her and position yourself ultimately where you would want to be. Um, to like engage with her, talk with her, you know, what have you. I'd like to kind of position myself right about there. Okay. So the dwarf. for everyone else to kind of stay behind me. Dwarf moves around the bend. I just like to keep myself within 10 foot of Raiden at all times. All right. I'm going to move up near the dwarf. Okay. About there. Works out. And then, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Okay, once the girl kind of stumbles and sees you guys and kind of looks up at you, um, what you see next um, is uh, what she appears to be running from. Let's see if I can get this in one shot. All right. These creatures hop up onto the log, up onto the tree, um, with a very, you know, uh, just strange grace. Um, as they hop up and over onto the uh, log, they look down at her and they look over to you. They appear to be goblins, uh, but these goblins are wearing bright red caps on their heads. Um, and they're holding um, just nasty black looking uh, scimitars or curved blades, really, not really scimitars, just things that they can cut with. Um, and once they kind of see you, their reddish eyes kind of narrow at you, and they all kind of ah! um, as as they're annoyed by you being here. The dwarf lets out and says, "Scum of the deep, damn goblins!" <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go ahead and roll initiative. So are you two? It's gonna be fun.
just the best roles today. <laughs> and that's what they look like. Oh yeah, you're worried, man. <laughs> We're gonna die before we can hit them. <laughs> yeah, they're super fast. I think I need a dwarf. You have to select your token before you click initiative. Oh, gotcha. Okay, that's why that didn't work. Well, that was just wonderful. We got my handout section open, and some of the people are named the same as the handouts. So I keep on clicking on handouts instead of character sheets. We were a wonderful <laughs> initiative. <laughs> All right. Sort. Okie dokie. Uh, they go first. Oh god, this is gonna hurt. It's not really a straight line, even though the line would have shown that being the case. It actually drops down and runs past the girl around the stones to that point. Um, this one hops up onto the stones kind of making its position up there. And this one dashes across the stones um, over top of Bellerin. Looks like the other ones kind of hop up onto the uh, tree log behind. Quite a few of them, it seems. And go ahead, Hadrian, you're up. I'm going to move towards the one closest to me. There. Okay, so it's up the uh, the rocks away. So um, you can get up there. Just consider all of those spaces that are rocky as difficult terrain. Yeah, I can just reach it then. Okay. <laughs> and then I will booming blade. All right. You see this familiar moat of energy appear on his blade. He swings. And he will miss his attack. All right. Um, any bonus actions or anything? Nope, that's it, I'm afraid. All right. Uh, Gimmits. Um, it looks like one's kind of moving towards you and Bellerin. Uh, the others are kind of moving around um, at higher vantage points. Uh, but this one's coming straight for you. Okay, can I enter a rage? Because I really don't like goblins. Yeah, no, go for it. Bonus All action. Right. Rage it. So I'm raging, and I'm going to make a melee attack against the one right in front of me. I'm going to charge at it with that war pick, and I'm going to try to bury it into its skull. Give it to me. Yeah, that'll do. Um, plus two damage because of raging. Um, yeah, you uh, move towards it, your shield up, your war pick uh, up uh, held up over your head um, as you come in to you know lock shields with it you bring your war pick down it sinks right into the red cap and deeper in you can feel skull splitting uh, beneath the weight of the pick and uh, you just take it and toss the thing to the side um, it kind of just sprawls out bleeding um, and dead its eyes rolling back into um, yeah it's dead give its roars with glee uh, can I expend any more movement to move closer to the uh, the lady on the road? Uh, yeah, certainly. The uh, second that happens, the girl's eyes kind of widen, um, and it, you kind of get this strange mix of like shock, but like, yeah, someone's here to save my life. Um, and the other goblins, all of their faces like were, ah, yeah, rrr, and then they immediately drop to. Oh no, like situation. 
All right. When you get to the girl, she kind of gets up, takes the uh, disengage action effectively. She's basically crawling around you to get behind you away from the goblin that was about to attack it. I, I probably tell her to get behind me anyways. Okay. Uh, Rodden, um, she just stays back. Um, she's holding her dagger, um, but she doesn't look like she's ready to rush in to do anything crazy. Bellerin. All right. Uh, calling instructions back to somebody is a free action, correct? Correct. I'll call back to uh, uh, Raiden or Raiden. 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 Uh, try to cover uh, the master treasure hunter, and I'm going to try to move up to engage the goblin that was about to attack the girl. Okay. Ah. Yep. I was actually moving square by square just in case something happened. Oh, and real quick, just so you guys know, pro tip, if you guys um, pick up your token and kind of, you know how you're holding it and it's kind of hovering, if you move it to another square, press space bar and then space bar again, it'll drop a yellow dot that connects to a yellow dot that start that's at your start position. And then you can continue to do that while holding it and hovering it and create kind of a trail. You saw when I moved the goblin, it kind of had like a yellow trail that followed it. Uh, that's what that does. Oh, cool. Pretty useful if you're trying to identify your movement. It's not a huge deal for me because I assume you're not going to run into attacks of opportunity if they can be avoided, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not a super crazy guy with that, but I've dealt with those people, so I'm just saying. <laughs> for me, I was trying to be more aware of if you had some sort of like natural pitfall that I had missed that, sure. oh, you triggered my trap. Well, shit. Sure. Um, <laughs> do me a favor, though, like just for just for because you're you're being observant and uh, cautious. Make an insight check for me, Bellerin. Yeah. Okay. You're 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 pretty sure that there's some sort of f there's there's definitely fear on these goblin spaces. They don't look like they're um, as gung ho as they were initially. The second one of them died, it's it went south for them facial wise. Couldn't imagine why. Either way, I'm going to try and hit the one. Did you see that dwarf? I mean, holy shit! Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and he's very angry. <laughs> Just a rogue in the background that can't hit shit. Okay, you come in with a warhammer and swing. It gets its shield up in time and it blocks it. But when it does, it's like, ah! and it looks like it's right afraid, um, definitely scared. Um, the goblins that are up on the tree, they bound off. Um, hold on a second here. They bound off of the tree and start heading down the path away from you guys. And it looks like they are dashing, basically running full tilt away from you. Continuing away. All these ones are basically off board. The one that is adjacent to uh, the Master Treasure Hunter, I think we're calling him now. It's good. It's good. I like it. It's a good moniker. Uh, it's just going to run. It's going to run away from you without disengaging. You can take an opportunity attack if you so please. All right. Oh hell yeah! You bury your short sword in it um, as it tries to escape you. Um, and it dies. The one that's up on the rocks above you sees that happen, and it looked like it was reaching for its short bow, but then it sees you kind of like butcher his friend, and it's like ah! drops its short bow and then darts away. I was, I was about to say, can I? As a react, can I? I was going to say, uh, press the agitation, make my eyes glow red, just to really terrify it. Perfectly fine. Um, yeah, you smash into it, and your eyes kind of flare with our like eldritch energy, and it's like nope, and it's <laughs> not gone. Um, Bellerin, you're gonna get a similar um, uh, uh, opportunity attack as it tries to dart underneath the tree and crawl through the muck to get away from you. All right. Uh, it doesn't make it too far. As it starts to kind of get down and get ready to go down, you bring your hammer down on its back. Um, and like its shoulder and kind of cause it to just lay there flat in the dirt. 
All right, perfect. Um, Hadrian, they're probably about, uh, from you, I'd say, I would say about 50 feet away from you uh, through rough terrain um, and kind of at a lower point uh, heading down the road. It looks like they are full on tilt trying to escape. Uh, I think I will bonus action dash so I can make it the 30 feet. Mm hmm. And then I'm going to launch a dag, just chuck a dagger at one of them. Okay. So that, uh, it hits the one in the shoulder. It kind of cries out in pain. Uh, the others kind of look to him with like concern, but it doesn't seem to, you know, change the fact that they're full on trying to get away from you. And there's that right. dagger gone forever. <laughs> Go ahead and knock that dagger off. Yeah, it's, it is definitely a lost dagger. Um, Gimmits, you saw them kind of run away uh, on the other side of the, um, the the wood. If you'd like to pursue, you can definitely hop over the tree. You are still in a rage. It's entirely up to you. What would you like to do? Uh, he, he's, he's pursuing these goblins, so I'm going to try to jump the tree and just run towards them as much as I can to try okay. to re-engage. We'll go ahead and count the tree as basically like going up it and over it. That's 15 feet of movement. So this would be 20, 5, and then this would be 25. So you could get to here, and you'd probably be about maybe we're 10 feet off, so about 20 feet behind them. Okay, so I will uh, end my turn there. The commoner girl's looking towards Bellerin, and she just looks like she's, you know, um, a bit battered and bruised. Um, Bellerin, as you kind of look over to her, you can see that she's wearing a cloak, and it looks like she's wearing loose garments underneath, but she's covered with water. Her hair is slicked back. Um, your presumption is that she might have been somewhere near here, um, possibly in a stream or a pond or what have you, and she might have been taken unawares by the goblins. Um, just based on her, it looks like she very quickly gathered her things. She looks disheveled and kind of a mess. Um, Rodden just stays back, um, looking still towards the tree line, um, but she's just kind of holding herself and watching like the road behind her. Uh, Bellerin? Uh, I'm going to approach the commoner girl. Uh, Miss, are you all right? Because I'm fairly certain the others have either routed them or the goblins are going to be gone long before I can reach them. That's an accurate assessment. Um, and uh, good on you to perceive that. Um, she looks um, like kind of you know nervous and worried, and she kind of looks to you and she says, "Oh, I'm fine. Thank you so much. Thank you for saving me. I, I I can't I can't I can't tell you how glad I am. My father is going to be mad. Uh, I'm not supposed to be out this far. I'm so I'm I'm so thankful for you. Are you from the tower? No, I'm from the town." Oh. Oh, when my companions get back, would you like to travel with us since we are heading towards the town anyway? Oh, I'd much rather travel with you than without you. She smiles, kind of looking at you. She's probably in her, like, late teens or early 20s. Um, and, uh, yeah, she, she not terrible looking. <laughs> but she seems to be taking a, taking, taking, she, she's fond of you. Wink, wink. Yeah, I know. I'm going to be making some charm checks later. <laughs> Fair enough. The uh, goblins... Oh, this is what I was looking up. I just remembered. It's like when you start looking something up and then you forget what life is. Um, yeah, they're going to continue to dash on their turn. So they'll basically get... Uh, they're probably about 80 feet away from you. Um but when they get to a far enough point away from you, they all kind of drop into like the forest and the trees and the bushes and what have you. And you're not sure you can trail any of them specifically. Go ahead and make a perception check, um, Hadrian and Bellerin. Yeah, Hadrian, you have no idea which direction they went. Like, they, it looks like they split up. Bellerin. I just looked at the sun. <laughs> Bellerin, less unperceptive. You're pretty sure that they all kind of tumbled into the uh, the, the bush line and then started heading kind of southwest um, away from you and the, the road. Uh, Hadrian, what would you like to do on your turn? 
make my way a bit back towards the girl. I'll use bonus action dash so I can make it to here. And I'm going to use my action to press digitation to dry her off, to dry her clothes and stuff. We're really fine. Okay. And uh, gimmicks? They're, they're gone at this point, aren't they? Yeah, they seem to be outpacing you. Um, they move 30, you move 25, and they are full on running. But you do have a beat on them if you wanted to continue to tail, but they will eventually outpace you. Yeah, even in his rage, I think at this point if they're going that fast and going that far away I'll, I'll disengage my chase and make my way back okay perfectly fine um you um restore the girl's clothes to dry and uh you know kind of great yeah, with her. her hair as well just like just generally dry her off so she's and, not uh, sucking wet yeah Perfectly fine. Um, Ron kind of walks up to the group as you kind of reassemble, and uh, she kind of looks to um, a girl. Um, it doesn't look like she's looking at her. Um, she's kind of. It looks like she's trying to recall something. Uh, maybe she knows the girl. You're not sure why she's looking at her the way she's looking at her. Um, and you guys, uh, Ron says, "Let's continue on. We must make it to the town." I'm standing on the log, and I'm just going to look down at the lady and say, uh, what business did you have with goblins? They they caught me while I was bathing in the hot springs. Father told me I should never go out that far, but they are absolutely amazing. Do they, do goblins frequent these parts? The redcaps do. The redcaps are all throughout the valley. And we should keep an extra guard out for these damn red caps. Yes, and well, we'll most likely stay in the village for a while. And maybe next time you can take my friend, my elven friend, with you. With a little wink. Awesome. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> um. <laughs> Master Mercer, you are a very deep chuckle. Master Mercer, you, mo you most certainly have a uh, eye for treasure, don't you? Certainly do. Rodden shaking her hair or her, her head. The uh, the other girl doesn't seem to understand what you're talking about. Is she? Did even get a smile? Yeah. From from her, she yeah. It's kind of like a sheepish kind of <laughs> kind of. I don't know what's happening right now. What they're talking about, but Rodden is shaking her head and not smiling. Maybe she's jealous. Um. Anywho. You guys make it to the town of Fog. It is your stereotypical town. Um, it looks like um, just a lot of uh, buildings um, of a very rustic nature um, and generation. But in the center of the town is a circular stone structure that appears to kind of have uh, an ancientness to it. Um, it looks like the town also has a, a single uh, building that kind of stands out from the rest, kind of a longhouse, uh, which you would presume just based on the structure of the town, it's like a town hall. Um, that's where she's the, the, the commoner girl um, who tells you her name is uh, Delia. Um, that's where she starts to go. Have we just like saved the mayor's daughter or something like that? Perhaps, maybe. Well, that's where she starts to go. Um, Rodden kind of like you know heads after her, just as a, an assumption. Um, does anybody else go anywhere different? Um, I'd be following uh, Rodden because obviously I would assume since she's trying to deliver this artifact to someone, I would like to accompany her until you know safety has been assured. Absolutely. I'd also like to pull Radin aside quickly and just show her the shield, the axe, and the dagger and go, I collected these. They're yeah, obviously yours if you wish to keep them. She shakes her head. Um, I, I'm i glad that you took the items. Um, I did not see you do it, but I'm glad for it. Um, if they had fallen into the hands of evil or minds, they could cause... Um, the world some problems what you hold in your hands are the gifts of the magi the shield is known as the ward the dagger is known as the sword 
and the um, the axe is known as the standard. They were all items that were accrued by our our first mage. Um, they were gifts of uh, the guild. She says as she gestures towards the dagger. Um, gifts of the dwarven king. She gestures to the axe, and a gift from the elves of the one wood. She gestures what was towards the name the shield. Again? Shield is the ward. The dagger is the sword, and the uh, axe is the standard. Am I standing next to him as this is oh, going yeah. on? <laughs> yeah. Do I see the? Because uh, you said it had the dual hammers on the crest of the axe. Do I recognize? Dual axes. Do I do I recognize that as the sign of Ingham or no? This is the hammer. No. So it's an it's axe. it's dual axes. And as you kind of look over it, you actually recognize the sigil very very clearly. It's two axes crossed over each other, and the untrained eye would not notice the flame pattern that's built around the axes. The sigil that you see there is the old sign of the clan. Blaze Hatchet, which is one of the kingly houses of um, the Summer uh, Summeroth Dwarves. Well, I would like to comment on that. <laughs> just telling him, like, yeah, I it, recognize that axe. I'll just turn to the dwarf, and if Bellerin is nearby, I'll turn to Bellerin as well and say, "Give it, hand in the axe, the elf, the shield. Now we got the sword, the ward, and the standard, one each." The uh... The girl nods her head and she says, interesting that fate would have it, that these would fall to you. Fate, I don't believe in fate. Fair enough. But sure, whatever you believe. Fair enough. She uh, wanders after Delia um, towards the uh, the building. Delia has since entered and has had some time to, um, you know, um, talk to people within. When you get inside, you can see that there is a course an older man with a bushy looking uh, mustache no beard just mustache um, and he's kind of talking to her and the other people that are around her are kind of yelling and talking and from what you can hear um, a goblin died what we can't have this and you hear other things being chanted um, about her return it seems that she's talked to them about her um, the events that uh, transpired outside of the town um, a man walks over to you says, are you the ones that killed the goblin? Goblin. <sighs> You've doomed us all. You've doomed us all. <clears throat> the mayor will deal with you, and he looks over to the mayor, and the mayor kind of looks to you, and he's the guy with the bushy beard, or bushy uh, mustache. And he kind of walks over to you uh, as a group, and he says, is it true what she says? You killed one of the red caps? I think, only, only, I think we each did. This is troubling news indeed. <sighs> the only good goblin is a dead goblin. Well, why is it troubling? He, he's about to finish his sentence, and another guy replies to the dwarf. He says, "Oh, heroes! Great, that's what we need. A bunch of adventurer types coming in and ruining everything." The mayor kind of like raises a hand to him to silence him, and he looks to you and he says, "The Redcaps rule." the Valley of Fog. The only ones who held any sway over them were the Acolytes. The Acolytes of the Binding. And he looks to the girl and he goes, who, if reports are accurate, their tower, the Tower of Fog, has fallen. Is it true? And the girl looks to him and nods his head. Well, then we have no protectors. If, if it is true that you've killed one of theirs, they'll want revenge, and they'll come for us. Well, it looks like we're staying for a while, doesn't it, friends? Yes, I say that we should go to them, I mean, before they come to us. If your goal is to defend us from this, from an onslaught we will foresee, then you will need help. There's an elf in the woods, and he should be able to assist you if you are to, your true plan is to defend the town. Go and find him and bring him back. And defend us from the the red caps. We'll go and find the red caps and destroy them. Other than that, if you do not choose this course of action, then you must leave this town and understand that the blood of 
all of our villagers is on your hands. I feel honor bound that we had such a hand in this situation that we must see this out to correct it. Where would this elf be? And if we cannot find him, where would the red caps normally hole up? The commoner girl says, Oh, the elf isn't too far from the hot springs that I was at. It's just a short trip up the road. It, sh- it shouldn't be too hard to find him. And she smiles. Um, Rodden looks to you and says, I know where the elf stays. Well, Radden, you can eat the shortest away, or stay here in the town whilst we go. You seem like an able protector whilst we're not here. If the uh, pack do attack here whilst we're gone. She kind of looks over to the mayor, and behind the mayor you can see a man um, with uh, kind of short crop blonde hair. Um, he's wearing like a brownish robe and he's carrying a very strange looking staff and she looks back to you and after looking at him and she says i have words with some of the people in this town if you can go and acquire the elf's assistance and you can persuade him into assisting us then we should have no problems with the the goblins none whatsoever and she kind of nods to you and says i thank you for bringing me here after you've taken the items up from my for my order. I do not think I owe you anything else. She nods her head. I do thank you for your protection. And she starts heading over to the uh, the mage with the strange staff. Uh, before she walks away, I'd like to put a hand on her shoulder and say, mm-hmm. is your charge safe here? Is it secure? She looks back to you and she says, After seeing what I saw at the Tower of Fog, it is no safer here than it would be anywhere from the king. I hope to make it safer with some assistance. She nods her head. And I'd like to talk back to her and say, any assistance that we can lend to those ends, I will gladly give. I will seek you if I can think of a a course of assistance that you can um, engage in. All right. Um, as you guys start to kind of muster up, um, you know, um, haven't really uh, traveled too long, but it's it's getting later in the day, uh, of course. Um, you guys intend to set out in the morning or set out immediately? I'll actually look to the mayor. Do we have the time to rest and check our gear before we seek out the elves, or will the goblins attack near immediately? I do not know. Um, if it's true what you say, it could be immediately. It could be a couple of days. I, I it's never. It, this has never happened before. I believe it'd be best to go immediately. Believe it. Agreed. At least if they do attack earlier than expected, we're more prepared than if not. Okay. I don't have my spells, but it's fine. Should, should we at least take a short rest? Yeah, you can. Um, the point is. Um, once you guys kind of gather yourselves and start to leave out of the town, um, the uh, the winds kind of pick up, um, and the autumn leaves are like splaying about, um, and um, somewhere off in the distance, um, a ways away from you, um, in a small hut up above the hot springs um, of the valley of fog, uh, stands an elf waiting to meet with these three heroes. All right. Uh, next session will be next week at 2 p.m. Um, and we're obviously ending the session today. Um, thank you for watching if you are watching. Um, and um, we will have a guest, um, obviously, uh, next week when we um, play. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream. Thanks for watching. Let's see if that can work.